host of the show. Thanks for watching. We are coming to you from our studio here in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, home of the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl, which I announced on our program last night. It's a college football game, and the news of this game has taken the world of sports by storm. He's hosted the Oscars, had a late night talk show for nearly 20 years, but now Jimmy Kimmel has a college football game named after him. Jimmy Kimmel's getting his own college football bowl game. Kid you not. Get ready for the Kimmel Bowl. It's a real college football bowl game with his name on it. Jimmy Kimmel is sponsoring. <laughs> How cool is that? That's pretty good. Cousin Sal sponsoring the tailgate. I mean, is this going to be the most fun bowl game in all of existence? <laughs> I, I think it might. This is the first bowl named after a human being. Congrats to him. The Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. Well, all those bowls' names are silly anyway. Hey, <laughs> you mean that? You're not going to ruin my mood. That things are really turning around in 2021. Anyway, these are the kinds of good times we have here in California, which is why we were just named the most fun state in the country. We are, of course, we're the most fun state in the country. We have by far the most Dave and Busters of anyone. Look at that. Our Dave and Buster index is off the charts. You know, they rank the states based on entertainment, recreation, and nightlife. California finished number one. Florida is number two, until Finkel gets there. It's going way up. And um, one of our departing producers, Craig, he's heard such great things about Florida. He's moving there. And Nevada is number three. Nevada is number three. Hawaii somehow finished 20th. And the least fun state, according to this meaningless list, is West Virginia, which I, clearly the folks who put this together have never been to the Stirrup Gallery Museum in Elkins, <laughs> home of one of the top five collections of powder horns in the United States. Top five! <laughs> Texas is in the fun top ten. They're at number eight, but that ranking is in jeopardy thanks to their governor, Greg Abbott, who found a brand new way to kiss Donald Trump's orange bottom. A letter that we are about to sign provides $250 million to be allocated as a down payment to begin the border wall. That's a quarter of a billion dollars, and it's more than enough to hire the project manager and the contractors and to begin building the wall. And we are committed. Oh, how about that? Oh, at least he's honest. <laughs> That's right, Texas is building a wall and New Mexico's gonna pay for it. <laughs> Maybe the wall is to keep Ted Cruz from fleeing New Mexico next time there's an emergency. <laughs> this is interesting, you know, Facebook apparently doesn't want us to fight anymore and they're testing out what they call conflict alerts. They use artificial intelligence to detect discord in a group and then they'll send a notification to the administrator of the group to try to calm everyone down. And this is the example they gave. Someone writes, anyone who thinks that ranch dressing belongs on a pizza is seriously disturbed. True, by the way. And then the comments, ranch dressing makes everything better. Anyone who thinks otherwise is messed up. I will die on this hill. It's mayonnaise that makes me really angry. Newsflash, mayo and aioli are basically the same thing. I'm starting to think the people that work at Facebook have never been on Facebook because <laughs> AI is no match for NI, which is natural ignorance. Maybe the, maybe the AI will get intelligent enough to realize that Facebook itself is the problem and destroy it once and for all. <laughs> you know, Donald... Donald Trump is not allowed on Facebook, which is still funny to me. It's like being banned from riding the bus. But he was back with his pal Hannity last night. And of all the things to be concerned about, of all the many issues that plague our world, what do you think Donald Trump's thinking about right now? Is it A, his rigged election, B, the grand jury in New York, or C, windmills? Let's find out. They're making windmills all over the place to ruin our land and kill our birds, to kill everything. It's not good. <laughs> Donald Quixote strikes again. Why do you think he hates windmills so much? Is it, maybe they're messing up his hair? I don't know. But the tan of La Mancha also lashed out at one of our most bitter rivals, a country that it makes Russia look like Disneyland by comparison. And Joe Biden just lets them sit there on our heads and does nothing about it. Canada is very, very tough. Uh, Canada is uh, as tough as anybody. They, they, it's very unfair the way Canada treats us.
<laughs> well, maybe we should build a wall up north in Montana, too. What is his problem with Canada? I bet Celine Dion refused to sing at his birthday or something, <laughs> and he never forgot it. The CDC has labeled the Delta variant of the coronavirus a variant of concern. It's believed to be more transmissible, and the symptoms are more severe than previous variants of the virus. This is like the part of the movie where everybody's celebrating and the kid nobody listens to is trying to warn them the monster has gotten stronger. But there is a simple way to protect yourself and to protect those around you, and all you have to do is get the vaccine. A little shot. You're protected. It's free. Millions of people around the world got it. There are virtually zero serious side effects. But somehow people are still like, I'm not letting anyone tell me what to do, which is, I don't know, that's like deciding you're not going to stop at red lights. Why should I? <laughs> Government can't tell me how to drive my own car. You know, a year ago, we were pumping gas in hazmat suits. It's easy to forget that. Much of history has been conveniently revised. And with that said, it's time for another edition of This Week in COVID History. This Week in COVID History. It's June 2020. Americans are masked up and fed up. I protest face coverings. Got it. I am not a terrorist. Of course not. I I'm not a sex slave that wears masks. Oh, you flirt. Meanwhile, COVID-19 is doing a 23 skidoo. It's fading away. It's going to fade away. If you look, the numbers are very minuscule compared to what it was. When it dies out, and it is dying out, the numbers are starting to get very good. They are? Not according to Governor Gorgeous. Our numbers are going up, not going down. And I'm very concerned. Who to believe? Even Dr. Fauci is confused. He told a British newspaper, I would hope that we could get back to some degree of normality within a year or so. Ha! A year? No way, Fauci. Extra, <laughs> the head of the COVID task force has some good news. Americans are buying RVs at a pretty rapid pace. Terrific. And the coronavirus? America is hitting the road in American-made RVs. Hitting the road and heading to Tulsa Town. Rally ho! Thousands of people without wearing masks outside and inside two arenas in Tulsa for the president's first post lockdown rally. These Oklahomies are catching rally fever. Aren't you worried about people getting sick? No, uh, we're not concerned. Everyone is going to be safe. Everyone, like Kimberly Guilfoyle. the president's campaign staff. <laughs> and living person, Herman Cain. <laughs> now back to the reason we're all gathered. It's a disease, has more names than any disease in history. Kung flu. Ooh, nice xenophobic zinger, Donnie Dangerfield. Breaking. We're under attack. Paw Patrol. 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 The cancel culture movement may now be coming for Paw Patrol. First they came for Chase, and I said nothing. This has been This Week in COVID History. Oh, wow. Oh, remember Paw Patrol? I guess they, I guess it went away. Sunday, in case you didn't know, is the first day of summer, and it also happens to be Father's Day. Are you doing anything for Father's Day, Guillermo? I don't know, Jim. I, just, know? I nope. just hope that I, I can make sweet love to my wife. I hope so, too. And I hope you will give me a full report on that on Monday. I will, Jim. I want to know every moment. Uh, I promise I will. From beginning to end. Uh, I promise. I will. Okay, all right. Well, here's a nice gift idea for Dad this weekend. Um, don't touch the thermostat. Just leave it where it was. He'll be happy. <laughs> this might be the... I don't know, this might be the worst of many unremarkable Father's Day because I feel like we all had our big emotional family reunion on Mother's Day. Now Father's Day here is like, here's some socks, Dad. Talk to you next year. <laughs> There's a stereotype, and some may say it's an unfair stereotype, that dads don't pay much attention to their kids. So in the name of science, we decided to put that to the test. We went to the farmer's market here in L.A. to put dads on the spot in a new edition of Pop Quiz. We're out here today asking dads how much they know about their kids. So I'm going to ask you some very basic information about your son. Okay. You're going to tell us if your dad was right or wrong, OK? All right, you got it. All right, first question. When is your son's birthday? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, all right. I, I'm, I'm guessing here. I'm saying March the something. <laughs> 
So you said it's March something? Yeah, March the 13th. September 1st. Yeah. <laughs> that was that close. <laughs> A few days off. Yeah. He, he, he literally could not have been farther off. He was six months almost to the day. All right, who's next? Who is your daughter's best friend? You met her today. Veronica. No. Stella. Stella. What is your daughter's middle name? Celine. No. I'm a... My name is... <laughs> it's Julia. <laughs> She meant that's going to cost him at least a pair of AirPods. But uh, well, let's see if this person is better. How old is your daughter? Seven. <laughs> well, I'm set to turn seven, but I'm six. What is your daughter's blood type? We don't know. So you're going to have to forfeit the shirt. Has your daughter ever played an instrument? No. That's wrong. I played the piano. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> How long did you play the piano for? Oh, like five years. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar now? Yeah, it sounds very familiar. <laughs> How do you forget there's a piano in your house? It's, they're large, right? I guess she wasn't that good. Let's try another dad. What is the name of your son's school? Uh, Taylor Run. Uh, no. Nope. What is it? Liberty High School. Okay. Is your son allergic to anything? I think to, uh, not strawberry, blue, uh, something berry, so he can finish it. Are you allergic to something berries? No. Yeah. No. Are you allergic to anything? Penicillin. Ooh. <laughs> ah, berries, penicillin, what's the difference, really? <laughs> hey, kid, if there's an emergency, call 911. What's the name of your daughter's babysitter? Oh, uh, we don't have one of those. It's Mallory. Mallory, OK. All right, my final question. Two minutes ago, I asked you what your son's birthday is, and he told you. What is your son's birthday? If I answer that, if I didn't know that, I'd say it's stupid, and I wouldn't want to say <laughs> an answer that's going to make, it was September the <laughs> first, first. <laughs> <laughs> it is. He can help himself. <laughs> and I hope the mic didn't pick him up saying anything. You want to wish your dad a happy Father's Day? Happy Father's Day, Dad. I hey, love you. Happy Father's Day. Oh, no, you Day, don't son. know my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for making me look stupid. <laughs> you know, I think you did that all on your own, big fella. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Oh, oh, oh.